Hey guys, how's everybody today? Today we're going to talk about the thyroid gland and specifically I want to talk about the thyroid diseases, hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism. Now you probably have heard of someone with a thyroid problem, right? And what you usually notice is that people with either hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism has a problem with their metabolism. Whether it's a hypothyroidism problem which really means an overactive thyroid, obviously, which is why it's called a hyper or a high functioning metabolism, right? In contrast, hypothyroidism results in decrease in metabolism, and this is due to the hyposecretion of the thyroid hormones, specifically T3 and T4. Now, let's go back and look at the thyroid gland. Now, obviously, it's a gland within the endocrine system, and its main function is the metabolic rate regulation of the body so it basically regulates the body's metabolism and this is done through production of certain uh, specific hormones in which we'll go through a little bit later and it's these hormones that stimulate the the metabolic and body heat production right now with these facts in hand we can therefore understand how a hyperthyroid right which produces too much hormones or a hypo or an underfunctioning thyroid gland causes a slow or a lethargic metabolism. Now, guys, let's look at these hormones in relation to either hypo or hyperthyroidism. Okay. Now, first, I want to go over hypothyroidism. Now, hypothyroidism is a condition in which there's an inadequate, obviously, right, amount of circulating thyroid hormones, specifically thyroidithyronine or T3 and thyroxine, which is T4. Okay, now both hormones cause a decrease in the body's metabolic rate, right? Now, let's take a closer look. It's important to understand that hypothyroidism in itself is not really a disease since there's actually usually an underlying cause or theology, right? For example, some people with iodine deficiency or had part of their thyroid surgically removed or taken out, right, may show signs and symptoms of uh, hypothyroidism. And sometimes it can also be caused by a failure of another gland. For example, maybe a failure of the anterior pituitary gland, uh, which uh, does some stimulation in the thyroid gland, causes an overall response or a negative response to the thyroid hormones, okay? So how do we diagnose our patients with hypothyroidism? Now, first, we focus on our main and important hormones that plays a big role with hypothyroidism. And those are, like I mentioned before, it's the T3 and the T4 hormones. So the values of these hormones will be looked at, and obviously there will be a decrease with these hormones, right? Now, also, we look at another hormone, TSH, or the thyroid-stimulating hormone. And with a patient with hypothyroidism, there will be an elevation with these hormones. And this is due to the fact that basically the body's physiology will try to compensate for the lack of stimulation, right? And the lack of the T3 and the T4 hormones, okay? Now let's take a look at our patient symptoms, okay? Now due to the hypo stimulation of our patient's metabolism, then we all know that they will usually be sluggish or lethargic, okay? <clears throat> and because the body heat, which is the metabolism's engine that gives us energy and burns the calories, right, in our body, is under functioning, then our patient will obviously have weight gain, okay? And unfortunately for these patients, even though they are not eating a lot of calories, anything they consume is not properly burned by the body, hence the, the increase in weight gain, okay? So as the nurse, how do we treat these patients? Pharmacologically, we can give and administer thyroid hormone therapy obviously as ordered, right, by the physician. And Synthroid or Synthetic Levothyroxine is the medication most frequently prescribed. Now, obviously, since the main issue with hypothyroidism is a low amount of the hormones T3 and T4, what Synthroid basically does is that it's a synthetic hormone really identical to a thyroxine which is t4 so basically it's just uh, replaces this hormone now the thing to keep in mind is that with thyroid replacement medication it is to be taken for the rest of the person's life okay now i want to quickly go over hyperthyroidism okay now with hyperthyroidism there's basically an excess of the circulating thyroid hormone in the body right and this excess of thyroid hormone produces obviously what we call a hypermetabolic state. Now, 
one of the most common underlying causes or diseases that that usually causes hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease. Okay, so what's Graves' disease? It's basically an immune system disorder that usually results in an overproduction of thyroid hormones. Now, I may have sound. I mean, that may have sounded pretty repetitive, right? But simply, what occurs in Graves' disease is that autoimmune antibodies, right, apparently begin to mimic TSH or the thyroid stimulating hormone. And obviously, this causes a hypersecretion, right, of the thyroid hormone in the body. Now, I want to go ahead and look at the pharmacological treatments uh, for this patient. And since our patient has an excess of thyroid hormone circulating within the body, what we're going to do is basically administer an anti-thyroid medication, right, as ordered by our physician, obviously. Now, the main anti-thyroid medication that you will most likely encounter in your NCLEX exam is profilthyorosyl or PTU, okay? And basically, profilthyorosyl or PTU, what it does is that it inhibits or stops the enzyme that facilitates or basically produces the formation of the hormone thyroxine, which is T4, okay? And this results in a decrease of this hormone in the body, right? Now, an important side effect that we have to take note and be mindful about is that this medication can cause granulocytosis right which as we all know is a decrease of white blood cells in the blood and this is important because this can put our patients obviously at risk for infection okay now this is it for now I will go over more content and information about this topic in the next few videos again thank you so much for spending your time I really do appreciate it knowing that you at least have learned something that can help you pass your NCLEX exam and if you if you do feel that you want to help support me with continuing doing all these NCLEX videos, just please visit my website at www.allnursingnotes.com. And there's an NCLEX course in there that's available, and it has helped plenty and thousands of uh, NCLEX takers pass their exam. Again, thank you so much, guys, for, for listening and spending your time. Good luck in your exams. I know you will do great. God bless.